He thinks it's giveaway time. And who am I to argue? Biff. Pow. Zap. Clunk. Clunk. Ouchie. Hey guys. Busy little video this week. I'm going to start by testing my original Elegoo Mars and comparing it modestly with the stonking power of the Elegoo Mars 4 Ultra. Then we're going to take a look at the slap chop painting technique on this orc design that I've made available to you guys on Thingiverse. And finally, we'll be giving away an Elegoo Mars 4 9K 3D resin printer. So I guess we'd better crack on with things. A few days ago, I was asked how the original Mars compares to the current models. And this gave me an excuse to scrape the dust off mine. Amazingly, this is now four years old and still on all the original parts, including the FEB. And despite the mess from the caked on resin, I was surprised what an incredibly solid machine it is. It feels small now, but the base is very solid metal construction and the thickness of the lid is impressive. This was, of course, the very first resin printer that Elegu made. And if anything, they've learned how to cheapen down their designs by thinning out their materials. Frankly, I was stunned it was still working. The user interface was still clear and easy to follow. I took the time to dial in some Anycubic Craftsman resin and was frankly blown away by the results I got. As you can see, it was a complete plateful and included the orc that you'll see in a few minutes the amazing ring by Tomas Biddlesbeck and the good old Amerilabs Town test print. I was expecting something shabby and I was so wrong. This 2K pre-monochrome printer with 47 microns of XY resolution printed beautifully. In the hand, these pieces are very good. I imagined that this stitching would be too fine for the original Mars, but it's clearly there. And this ring looks stunning. One arm did fail, and this may be due to its position on the plate, as the old style light arrays did have their quirks. But even the Amenolabs Town test print looked good. Given this, you're probably wondering why there have been so many model changes since the early Mars. I didn't know either and I didn't get my answer until I took some photos with a macro lens and then it became obvious. Whilst the town print is okay, there's so much missing, like the top of the space needle and so many pins. And these numbers, they're pretty hard to read. Compare it against the prints made on the 18 micron Mars 4 Ultra and it became obvious. The newer machines are far, far better. However, I think you'll agree, even magnified, this ring still looks stunning. It's no Mars Ultra, but it's surprising how good these early resin printers still are. I was hoping to paint this orc, but the missing arm and shield gave me an excuse to print fresh parts on the Mars 4 Ultra. I did promise a few weeks ago to give this design away, so you'll find it on Thingiverse in both pre-supported and unsupported versions. Clip away the supports nearest the raft and the rest will likely fall away. Just look out for a few thick supports here and there, especially at the back of the head. I designed this orc specifically to help me get back into miniature painting after many years of absence and I decided to explore the slap chop painting technique made famous by YouTuber, The Honest Wargamer. And I have to say, it really is an easy technique. I began by priming my pieces in Citadel Black. Most of my old paints and brushes have long gone, so I bought this small brush set by the Army Painter, and also this set of dry brushes. These rounded variety are less likely to leave brush strokes, or so I'm told, and they do work nicely. Typically, slap chop goes from black to grey, but I wanted a little warmth, so I chose this skin tone paint. 
The secret of dry brushing is to work the paint well into the bristles and then remove 95% of it. Many use a paper towel for this, but that can cause small blobs of paper towel to break away and get stuck in the bristles. So personally, I just use ordinary paper. Now just to test it, I'll dab the brush on the back of this base. If I had a splat of paint, there'd be too much paint in the bristles, but this is fine. You'll notice that I haven't assembled any of my pieces yet, and that's to keep things nice and easy. And going back to the base a moment for a little blatant commercialism, I think you'll agree this base is perfect. Every bit as good as you might get in a kit. Rather than buy bases, print your own. If designing isn't your thing, on my Etsy store, I sell these bases cheaply. You get all these sizes at one low fee. But do remember, it's the STL files you're buying, not the bases. I also do some flagstone bases, as well as industrial, futuristic ones. So, coming back to dry brushing, it's important to move the brush in one direction only. You're trying to very lightly touch the model in a downward motion. This creates the effect of light and shadows in the correct order. Shadows on the top of your model tend not to look very good. Just keep the strokes light and let the brush do the work. Within seconds, it starts to come to life. Don't kill your dark areas. We need those shadows. Just work in downward motions across the model. Eventually, you'll have something like this. Doing the same thing on the head, start at the very top, but keep the strokes light and always moving downward. Never force the brush in anywhere and just follow the contours. See how the shadows actually create the features? So do remember where those shadows are and don't fill them with light paint. Keep applying the same technique across all the pieces. When it comes to the axe, you'll need to stroke against the wood grain to help it pop through. It's time to do the same thing again with white paint. You're highlighting the lightest areas here, so you don't need to cover everything, just the brightest spots. Oh, and once you've completed the white highlighting, do not touch this plate armor area on the body of the orc with any other paint. Trust me, it's finished. Now we're going to apply some contrast paints, and these are so thin, they allow the highlights and shadows to show through them. This was my choice for the orc skin. You don't have to be crazy accurate, but do take your time. Here, it's just the tops of the legs and the neck area. Cover all the previous layers, even the black. Do the same with the head, but miss the eyes, tusks and nose ring. I like this colour for leather. Paint it onto the cowling and the boots. There's also a leather strap on the left arm and around the left hand. For a lighter shade, I use skeleton hoard on the belt and at the rear of the shoulder, elbow and knee armour. I liked this colourful wood, painted on all the wooden parts of the shield as well as on the handle of the axe. Now you can leave the metal armour alone at this point, as I did on this example. And even though it's just black skin tone and white, I like the effect. It's sort of dirty, grungy armour. But this time, I decided to experiment a little more. I took some Citadel Ironbreaker and added equal parts of water to make a very thin coating. This went onto the axe head, as well as the shoulder, elbow and knee armour, but not on the plate armour. Trust me, just leave that alone. 
I used the little Retributor armor for the gold bracelet and nose ring. And once that was dry, I decided to super glue the pieces together. Glue the arm to the shield and remember that there are two gluing points. A friend gave me this nice bright yellow and I dry brushed it across the head to make the lumps and bumps pop out more. A little auric armor brightens the gold in the lightest areas. Then I took good old Norn oil and repainted the axe and shoulder, elbow and knee armor. This light gray is then dry brushed onto those same areas to bring back a little sheen. And if you're really brave, you can mix a little white and green to paint the fingernails. And that's it. I really like the look of this and it's so easy to do. This style might not be for everyone, but I honestly feel it is a style that anyone can do. Now, of course, there are some amazing miniature painters out there. For instance, this is Tamiya Vidushpan, whose name I've no doubt mispronounced, but look at his incredible work. He's got more talent in his smallest brush than I've got in my entire body. And no matter what we do, most of us will never be as good as Tamiya. But with this slap chop technique, we can enjoy producing something that looks pretty good. So do have a go guys. And if any of you do paint this orc, then please place it on Instagram under hashtag VogOrc. I'd love to see what you guys do with him. And I'll probably showcase some of these in future videos. Who knows, maybe we'll get some really talented guys like Tamiya joining the Vog Orc fun. You'll need a 3D printer, obviously. And as we've already seen from the original Mars, any printer will do a fair job. But of course, it would be great to print it on the Mars 49K. Yes, it's giveaway time. Eligu have very kindly agreed to give away one of these printers to one of my viewers, which I think is very generous. So thank you, Eligu. As I said in a recent review, I honestly think at this end of the market, there's nothing out there right now that can beat the quality of the Mars 4 9K, with the exception of the Mars 4 Ultra. However, I have sweet talked Eligu on behalf of the winner, and whoever wins, and only if they want to, they can upgrade from the Mars 4 9K to the Mars 4 Ultra if they pay the difference. And to be honest, that's a steal. An Ultra for just $50. But as I say, it's optional. As it stands, the Mars 4 9K is still an incredible printer. To enter the giveaway, all you need to do is firstly subscribe to my channel because, well, I'm cheeky enough to ask. And secondly, place a comment below this video, including the words Mars Giveaway Madness. You can say whatever else you like, as long as it's family friendly and decent. So do beware, we love orcs here, not trolls. But it would help me if you place that phrase at the beginning of your message. I'm going to be using software to download the entries, so make sure that your YouTube account is in order and place that phrase at the beginning. Now, I'll keep this open for 30 days and then a few days after that, I'll draw a winner strictly at random. There's only one entry per person and entrants must live in a location that is serviceable by Eligu. In other words, if you could buy a printer directly from Eligu and have it delivered to you, then you can enter. If you're in one of those places where you can't buy a printer and have it delivered directly from Eligu, then I'm sorry, you can't take part. Also remember, these new Mars 4s are still under construction at the moment, so the winner should expect their prize later on this year. Finally, this is obviously a promotion for Eligu, and no, they haven't paid me anything. But as they've been kind enough to donate this prize, I think it's only fair that we give Eligu a little time in the sun. 
and so for that reason, the draw will not take place until the video has received at least 30,000 views. So in other words, in 30 days time, if there's only 29,000 views, then we'll wait a few more days, and once the magic 30,000 is reached, the draw will then be closed. But in fairness, that isn't really all that many, and I do expect plenty of interest in this video. So that's it for this video guys. Do download the orc, it's completely free, and do enjoy painting him and sharing your work on hashtag VogOrc. I just know that some bright spark is going to paint him in pink armour. Anyway, take care guys, and thanks for watching.